our good friend Sky, who is a minor main, who can answer questions from chat for those who are watching live, and try and answer general questions or come up with general questions that people would have when they're learning to be a minor for the first time. Hey, Sky, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you? I am good. I'm having a great day. So let me turn you up slightly or a little low for once. <laughs> for once. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sky, as a minor main, right? So, for anyone who doesn't know, this is Sky Storm. He's generally always in Discord. He's always playing Dwarf Farm, coming up with new builds, um, and plays this game longer than me. You have, what, 500 hours in this game? Very close to it. I'm like an hour away. Yeah. So, just a little bit more time playing this game than me. And most of that is minor, if not all of it. A very large portion of it is minor. Yeah, so at least three hundred hours. <laughs> yeah, just, 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 yeah, just, just three hundred ish hours. You know, N- not a lot. Um, so Sky, for anyone who's learning minor for the first time, what would be your few tips and tricks, especially if people are playing conquest? Because I know that you and me have been playing a lot since the new patches, and a lot of new people are starting, and a lot of them are sh- either struggling to get a mine set up early or they're building a mine and it's just taking too much resources away early and all that sort of stuff that happened back in november when both of us started to play but uh, i would say the biggest trick to being a functional miner is uh having a a a good mine setup that has a modular design what that means is that you can build it in stages. That way, no matter what your team needs or how much wood they provide, you have a way of getting them the resources they need without necessarily breaking the bank of resources for them. Yeah, and like the other thing is like deleting your mine and setting it up. So I know when I was learning miner, one big thing I kept doing was blocking my mine up. Like right now, if you look at my uh, screen, you'll see my mine is completely stuck. But I do have like nine miners mining or six mine or five miners mining and ananobs and I've blocked this mine up but if you make some point something in the wrong way like you put all your stone one way and it starts to block up one thing a lot of people do is they start deleting their mine and when you delete your mine you're not getting any resources for your um for your team so for me one thing a lot of people don't do is they don't future or not future proof but they don't future plan or think ahead of what's what they need in their mine, which is why I always like that original steel setup that I have, which is a few rails into a, an, a sorter and a splitter. It creates, it forges all the material, and I have room to build steel if I need to later on. Now, it doesn't build Gilver, but for now, I am I can live without Gilver. I, I'm trying to figure out a better way to that moving forward. Um, would you... Go on. I just, mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say something. I was going to say, as far as uh, improving your mind setup, there's only one real change that would increase the efficiency. And that would just be tacking on a fourth forge on the right side by adding a splitter there to push the uh, resources down one more. And there's, well, I could actually, I was thinking of this while you were talking as well. What I could do is just do this really quickly. Um, well, the left side's not bottlenecking. It's only the right side. It's actually a bit of both. Oh, you mean this side? Oh, I see. Oh, I give it to me. Yeah, stuck on that side there. It's doing a bit of both. So actually, I need to remove this. Put a. If I did this, there is other things to do to like, as I've said yeah, yeah, multiple sure. times. There's, there's there's always ways to improve on your mind yeah. setups and everything, um, especially since like, when it comes to mind setups, the smaller your mind setup, the more micro you need to make sure that it doesn't like buck. But the the larger the mind, the more resources you take from your team. So it's finding that nice balance where you can make a modular setup that you can build off of so that when you have the resources and can spend them, you can make it easier on yourself so you can do other things like use demolitionists to go after their structures. (laughs) Yeah, no, but like, yeah, that's what, like, as we were saying before, like when we play a lot of, well, you've played way more than me, but there is a million ways to skin a cat. So Mm -hmm. absolutely. It's... Um, one of the strongest ways of resources is highly dependent upon your team uh, supporting you and being able to help you uh, keep your satellite mines going. Because the only way to increase the amount of resources you have coming in is not by adding more rails to a system you have, but rather by adding 
an entirely new system that's getting additional resources at the same time your current system is getting resources. That's the only way to make your resources come in quicker. I have actually doubled my resource income uh, in games against some of the highest level players just because I had satellite mines going and they didn't. And it wasn't because I outplayed them because their individual mine did more than my individual mine um, because of micro and whatnot, but a single satellite mine is that strong where you can literally double the resources you gain in a game. Yeah, so like if you if you mess up one mine setup, let's say my mine setup can only build steel, I would have to delete half of it. Let's say I put it really against the wall. You, instead of re deleting that mine and rebuilding it, you're saying go off, build a mine somewhere else and just work over somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just the more mine setups you have going at one time, the more resources yeah. you have coming in, and, and it's, it's which is just more eco for your team. Like it's perfectly reasonable, and especially you're saying, and I would agree to this because I do it myself. It's perfectly reasonable to have one set mine that just makes you steal. And if you have a good Gilver setup, just go make your Gilver setup somewhere else. And as long as the mines aren't too close together, they generally don't interfere with one another, and it all just works out. Exactly. Yeah. Um... Kind of utilizing the AI's natural effect of going to the closest rail to your advantage. You could even go so far as to have uh, several satellite uh, places based on a minimal design that only focuses on a single resource because the less sorting that you have to do, the less you have to worry about micro because then you don't have to worry about bottlenecks or anything clogging up. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Uh... So like early on, if I've got a very strong team or if I know the, uh, the enemy team is not going to harass very hard, I will go and set up some micro mines to specifically pull in just iron or just gold at their respective locations. And then when they, like, let's say the iron one runs out of iron, I'll switch that one to gold and I'll switch the gold over to iron. Yeah. That way the resources never stop coming in and it's always a huge influx of resources for my team. But again, for someone as bad as me, that's a lot of work. So I wouldn't even bother <laughs> with that. I, to me, it's always just try and plan your mine out that you don't need to delete things and it don't it uses the smallest amount of resources because even though we're talking about satellite mines realistically you wouldn't even consider building your sec your first like satellite mine or second mine setup until like the 10 15 minute mark unless right. you uh, unless... the earliest i've ever done it was eight minutes because the other team was not playing very aggressively or our warrior uh, was completely denying them one or the other yeah, because like the one thing about it is like you need to make sure there's wood to build houses and buildings and that's mm -hmm. something that a lot of people, especially when they're new to the game, forget that like all resources are shared and they're needed by everybody. Mm, so... Yeah, the, the major trick to resource management I found, especially when playing with randoms, is I don't start doing some of the satellite mines and things until I know for a fact we've got extra resources. So... For example, I know that my satellite mines take less than 500 wood. So if we're sitting on close to 1,000 wood, I know I can take half of that without slowing down the builder um, and still be able to get a satellite mine up yeah. and running and pulling additional resources. Yeah, like I, I always have the, the, the small rule whenever I'm playing. If I'm playing with randoms who don't want to talk or they're not talking in chat and you can't communicate, it's hard to communicate, is if there's 200 wood... You have a hundred wood, or fifty wood at least, where you can build a little bit more on your mine, and they can still build a house. Like a barracks is one hundred and fifty. Most 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 buildings are like early ish game buildings are one hundred and fifty or less wood. So if you always make sure there's at least that much left, your team can't bark at you as much. But just don't overuse it. And that's why when I was shown the the old steel mine setup, it has three or four stages. It's crusher into with two rails behind it then when i when i'm allowed to use wood i build my sorter new crusher one more sorter sorry sorry sorter crusher and then two right or three rails behind that when all the ores are through the mine i delete the old crusher and swap it to a rail and now i can build my forges or i can yeah deadly it's the same setup. concept yeah and then kind to answer like, Darren encounters question as well it what well, encounters yeah, asking yeah, is ahead. what do you think about more crushers to get less materials stuck the trick to that is actually something we figured out um, going in um, mostly because of jack lafeer and some of the testing and everything he did 
um, the crushers aren't actually the problem. And the reason for that is because crushers actually crush at 100% efficiency. As soon as they get one of those rocks, they immediately crush that rock into all of its components. The problem is the rail can't process all six to eight components that come out of it at the same rate that the crusher does. So the rail speed is actually the thing that slows it down. Um, that's why I said the only way to actually increase the rate at which you're getting resources in isn't actually in, uh, adding crushers and things of that nature. It's by simply having an additional setup, uh, an additional rail system that is not even getting clogged up with those resources at all. Having a satellite mine, having those extra resources on a completely separate belt going into a completely separate warehouse increases that speed because you have two places that are now coming in literally doubling your input yeah. whereas the crusher itself will actually not bottleneck the situation the only bottleneck that he's dealing with right now is because he's got that many miners trying to put a uh, that much ore on a system that can only take probably five miners before overloading if that makes sense whereas yeah. just putting more crushers you're going to have the exact same bottleneck it won't actually change anything in the mine and yeah. you can you can actually test this in sandbox. Yeah, so I, I can show something here. So the other thing is with this, I'm just changing this to have three crushers on one side, and I'm going to delete the other side. So if we turn this into three crushers here, the the other thing it does is there is a time delay for sorting material. Um, why is this? No, no, you're fine. Saying there's a problem? every single miner has gone through that concept yeah. where they well, have thought increasing the crushers would increase yeah. the output to slow down the resources getting stuck at the front there so if you I look at really get it <laughs> yeah no, it's perfect so if no you worries. look at this three crusher set up here what's happening is the crushers are turning off because one only one thing can go through at a time here so it has to like stop the whole rail stops only one thing goes out so all i've done here is moved the bottleneck from this side to this side and it's not helped anything at all it's actually slowed down my mind because there's more places more places for things to move now the only thing i will say and this is extremely high level gameplay and very, very situation is the simple fact that the only benefit that that does in your system is it will actually shuffle your resources. So you always have a mix coming in. Um, the benefit to that for large scale mines towards very late end game means that you don't have to worry about microing your resources only because the, the crushers are actually going to throw gold in all throughout it's going to throw iron in all throughout as long as you're mining the resources it's going to shuffle them onto your belt so that you're never going to have just a whole bunch of gold coming in and get like starved for iron or getting a whole bunch of iron coming in and starved for silver or what have you that's the only like benefit of it because it basically does that though you don't need to do that with crushers you can simply do that with splitters and rails to to get the shuffle of resources going into the uh, main belt it's like, yeah, if, if I build this mine up there, um, encounter, I'm just going to build, just mine as much as I can here. Um, you'll notice that this whole thing is like basically stuck, like the, they're not moving, it hasn't sped up anything. Um, and for some reason, yeah, the, the bottleneck is actually the rails. It's not the crushers. Yeah, and so that's because the rails always operate at that speed you see there. They never increase their speed or change based on their inputs. It's advanced blacksmith. I just built a blacksmith really quickly. Like the other thing is, um, if you just have a, a standard setup uh, encounter, the other thing is uh, one like mine setup, but like one sorter. So if I just split this, just take this right side of the mine. Uh, isn't it, Sky, I'm right in saying, you can fill three and a half forges worth of material in a normal mine. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty accurate to what it comes out to. Yeah, so if you then there is an upgrade that increases your forge time by thirty percent, which effectively removes that bottleneck, which is technically a bottleneck. The rest of them are just like right now you can see that the whole thing is completely confused. Because it is two um, setups. So I'm just gonna delete this. To finish the thought on the uh the previous question there, Darren Counter. Um Essentially, the only way to fix the, the minor bottleneck of having, quote-unquote, too many miners on a drop-off point, right, is if you were to take that original splitter 
and you were to pull it back enough so that you could actually split those ores into three different directions and send them to three different mine setups. Yeah. That would allow the resources to basically calm down and uh, allow you to prevent the the miners from being stuck uh, waiting to go back because of a full belt. Um, but that, that literally only happens with either too many miners on a single uh, rail system, um, which at that point, if I have too many miners, uh, like when I'm going into a miner on a, si- uh, a single system, I'll just take a couple of them and I'll make a satellite mine. That way I'm never like idling workers necessarily very much. Um, typically at that point, I've got extra, like extra wood. Um, I know this isn't a great example, but you can see in the top left, he has quite a bit of wood. So if he wanted to do satellite mines, it wouldn't hurt the builder at all. He has plenty of wood to do so. Um, for demonstration purposes, obviously I know he spammed miners in order to increase speed. So it's it's not really a matter of that. Like yeah, in a conquest more. game, uh, you, you, you tack on workers when you can afford it. And when it's not necessarily pulling resources that your warriors desperate in need of or your builders desperate in need of and to increase your own production. Yeah, like you don't... It ain't like if your mine is 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 being is a little too full, it's not a big deal because better that than being empty. So, yeah, Tibbs can tell you from many games that we've played, there have been miners that have had, what was it like? What was the worst we have ever seen? Like nine miners to me building one, and I still outdid the resources. Yeah, yeah. So like more miners isn't necessarily going to mean more resources for your team. Yeah, a lot of people think as well in Canada, if you build more miners, you'll get more stuff from them, but you don't get any more stuff from them. That's kind of the issue. Like, people think that, oh, I'm building more miners, so therefore I can mine more materials. Like, yeah, but you still have to wait for it to, like, get sorted, get forged, get whatever. Um, Sorry, I'm just building to get some upgrades. Um, Yeah, on a uh, single mirror side... Uh, of a mine like this um it's usually about two and a half miners is all that's needed to uh fill it up when you mirror it tacking on uh two more is usually just enough to keep it from necessarily having your miners idle for very long um having your thane also help will definitely overload that a little bit more just because the thanes work a little differently than the standard miners yeah. Um, Aldruna works just like a miner, so basically treating her like another miner. Nubs works as fast as a geo, but like a miner as far as resources at the beginning, unless you upgrade him to be a geo. It, he's very interesting. Um, but essentially, that kind of rule of thumb allows you to break down how many miners you need for a setup. And then when you use geos, that's a whole other ballpark because geos are very, very easy to overwhelm a system because of the very large backpack and the amount of resources they get per run there is if i can find there but these guys can make me a geologist hut. there's some upgrades in the geologist hut that are kind of oh this mine setup is completely broken that's hilarious oh darren Still one yeah mind. the resource management is a big deal for a moment we have no the other players i even don't know what and how much i need dude that is completely realistic uh ever since this patch came out we've all been relearning that stuff too because yeah. a lot of things have changed um, it's all part of the the process of figuring out what you need to do for your team. But that's and your like thing. What, knowing what you need as well, so you can let them know, hey, I need some flag mushrooms, man. <laughs> yeah, like, th- that's the one thing about this game is teamwork is very vital at the top level, but, like, if you just chat, most people are perfectly reasonable, um, to be honest. So if there's some upgrades here, encounter that we've all determined they're really bad so the resource raw resource is really good because that helps your stone production that's really good but the minor speed one doesn't actually help you because you're just gonna clog a clogged mine faster it's only really useful if you get harassed a lot or you you have some issues or something like like there is sometimes where it's effective there was another one that allowed them to run faster which doesn't seem to exist anymore and what that did was it just meant you ran around getting blocked faster so they've the the mining stuff is is super super detailed and super complex that's why people love it i i'll stick to shooting shooting things up but if you look here uh like encounter you'll see that like 
this this was this was bottlenecking because there was not enough stone. I couldn't get it into the warehouse fast enough because it was stopping here at the bottom, which is like perfectly normal. So now if I split this, I should if as long as I can put stuff to this side, not block this. Um, like when it comes to, let's see if I can grab stupid amounts of stone. Like when it comes to mining, I think in conquest is if you have a team do the th team things yeah two to three miners are just are just good yeah like sky for one of the builds we're doing currently he likes two miners early but it's not to mine it's to build the setup faster and then yeah. mine if we gave sky level two early which we can't do for just living reasons and um, it would actually be super cool to see that happen or just to see, like, if we gave nubs the building stuff and the mining stuff efficiency, could Sky get away with more? Probably. But, again, Absolutely. how little, like, nubs doesn't build that much, because once your mine is built, you don't build it again, and a couple miners can build a mine in a few seconds anyway. Like, there's only one really, really spectacular upgrade, um, or two spectacular upgrades. I just already purchased it, purchased it, but one of them is... Uh, machinery something or another what's it called what's the stupid name for it machinery the one where it, for the instant build uh, i think it's like machinery specialist or something yeah. it increases the speed of machinery. so you see no reason why the builder quickly. should help the miner with the fast building speed uh, maybe if you have a build for it but probably not the mi the building speed for the builder's building speed only works on builder units and then the thane one does it's a situational deal because the builder has other responsibilities with but another resource gathering however there's definitely been times in uh the mine was attacked and i queued up a whole bunch of the mine to get it back up and running as quick as possible where the builder jumped in and helped me build it and it's completely reasonable to do once your your builder isn't in a, a bad place where they're uh, potentially going to slow down resource gain just because they don't have the builder that's helping you build on the resources coming in. But if they can afford it, well, I've had a lot of times where they've sent their thing to help out. Builder is generally very busy. He, he's the most busy body of the three Thane options, honestly. Uh, Warrior is definitely the most micro. Um, builders the most busy just having things to do and then the uh, the uh, miner um, is kind of in a weird middle ground because there's micromanagement but you don't have to micromanage if you know what you're doing with your mine so uh, it's kind or of if you have enough place. wood that you can just keep building mines exactly exactly But no, yeah, that should be bars, <laughs> that should be everything. This should make steel. So like that's two seconds that I built another steel setup encounter because I got some of the upgrades. It's not instant anymore. I just I didn't realize that till now. Yes, it is instead of instant, it's a it's Yeah, stupid amount faster, but with the other upgrades of mining building speed, it's it's still significant. Like it can still drop really fast, especially. Oh god, yeah, that built the warehouse in about ten seconds. Like it's still mm -hmm. nutty. Yeah. So one of the yeah, I, I have it now. So the one thing now I'm doing is each one of these transmuters is now making me double the amount of um. It's making me double the amount of materials. So now what I need to do is. Um. Two things. Yes. First, uh, to clarify, I don't think the builder's speed increase applies to machinery. No. Um, I haven't tested that myself, but there is like specific upgrades for things that do machinery and buildings, so I don't think they are the same. Um, but having the builders and having the extra people to increase the speed is always going to increase the rate. So there is that. And secondly, generally, it's about two and a half miners for... Uh, a single mine setup which would be like the bottom right of his mine there the the first forge setup that he did and then it would be an additional two and a half for the other side so you'd be looking at about five miners for a fully mirrored setup uh, of a double forge setup like he has going on right now that would generally be a good rule of thumb as to not necessarily overwhelm it too heavily um but so many things have changed with backpacks and resource gathering and timings and 
some of the different researchers, those numbers might have changed slightly. Uh, I'm not a minor, not a minor question, but a warrior one. I'm an Age Vampires player, so I'm wondering if Dwarf Five is more about mass unit or their quality units. Research is ever important, I know, but I yeah. So warrior, yeah. So warriors is funny. So I play a stupid amount of warrior, and the thing about it is it depends game per game so if you want to win the game without your miner so if you have a bad miner or a new miner or whatever the you need to harass them completely and you need to counter their units while out resourcing them which sounds really complicated because it is so if we also look here by the way i'm making two gilvers at a time so what i mean by that is when i'm playing with randoms I try to make sure I get more troll hunters because they'll get me more resources so I can then produce more units out of my barracks because I don't know when I'm going to get steel, for instance. And without steel, I can't end the game quickly. If I'm playing with a Sky or one of my like teammates, it's very important for me to try and get... Um, like. Be cognitive of the fact I'm going to get steel so I don't need as many barracks units so I can spend more time harassing or try and take more map control and stuff like that. If I see that they're making a lot of shield breakers I need to make sure I have spearmen because otherwise I've lost. So massing units can help for it from a concept of if you mass enough units you will win the game because more, num more numbers is better but if you mass the right units you end up if you amass the right units, you'll end up um, winning easier. So if you can build three barracks, for instance, you can have one that makes troll hunters, one that makes spearmen, and one that makes riflemen. And then, oh, you don't need any more s troll hunters. You own all your green camps. Then I start building only shield breakers because shield breakers counter riflemen and uh, spearmen counter shield breakers. And depending on their hero can depend on... If you want Spearman earlier, because against a rain or Frida, which is the one I play, she dies really quickly to Riflemen. And if I'm playing against Raven, I want Spearman because I can kill Raven with Riflemen because Raven doesn't die. So it all depends on that. But if you're already ahead, like five or six Riflemen isn't going to win you a game if... Because even though riflemen counter spearmen and counter mercs and counter troll hunters, it doesn't matter because I've got 10 troll hunters and, and 3 spearmen, I'm going to win that fight. So it's a mixture of both. There is units that are just completely broken in the game that are in use, but it kind of again goes back to the whole how much do you play the game sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful for anyone new to the game.